you do get a few funny looks when you're wandering around with a giant net or sucking up insects into a pooter, but uh, it's worth it, essentially, because they're the foundation of biology. If you're interested in biodiversity, if you're interested in conservation, the real biodiversity is in the diversity of insects. Insects are the little things that run the world. There's more than one ladybird. It's amazing how many people just think there's one. Most people, when they see a dead tree like this, they'll think this is kind of the end, this is uh, death, this is decay. There's actually 47 different species in Britain. There are roughly 4,500 worldwide. That's more or less exactly the same number as there are known mammal species in the world. And not all of those species actually have spots. There are stripy ladybirds, there are species with black spots, there are species with white spots. There's a yellow species with a clown-shaped mark on its back. They're a really diverse little bunch. Deadwood is just the beginning for a whole suite of insects, animals, birds. Um, in fact, people have estimated that between 20 to 50 percent of the biodiversity in a forest depends in some way on deadwood. Life after death in trees is, is a really crucial part of the forest environment. On a dead tree like this, you'll have fungus and there will be beetles that live inside the fungus. You'll have bark and there will be different types of beetles that live under the bark and you'll have the heartwood and there'll be different types of beetles that live in the heartwood. But they're all dependent on the dead wood in some way and we call those type of insects saprozylic insects. And what we discovered is for a really diverse saprozylic community, you need deadwood of different decay stages. You need different types of trees, some deadwood in the sunshine, in the open like this, and some deadwood in the shade. And all these different environments will attract different types of insects. So in fact, they are actually the most endangered group of species in the whole of Europe. They're not up there in terms of uh, the attention they get, but they're really susceptible to habitat loss. Um, and once you lose them, it's almost impossible to bring them back. And that's one of the reasons that Whiteham has one of the richest saprozylic communities in the UK, because the woodland has been here for such a long time and the dead wood has been kept. In a woodland like this, there might be a handful of mammal species, but we've recorded over a hundred species of saprozylic beetles alone living in this dead wood. It's so rich and so diverse, and they are really beautiful when you look at them, but you've got to find them and get up close to them. So if you want to save species, saving a piece of dead wood is probably one of the most important things you could do. I actually did my PhD just across the road at Oxford and Whiteham was one of my field sites and we were interested in looking at the non-native species, the harlequin ladybird, which is a Japanese ladybird which turned up in 2004 and has since spread across the country. Harlequin ladybirds are really pretty little things when you actually look at them, no two are alike, they're the snowflakes of the insect world, but they will eat anything that's smaller than they are and that includes 44 of the 46 native ladybird species. We probably won't actually lose any species, but um, we know that basically all of our native species have either started declining or have declined more rapidly after the harlequin turned up. It's the smoking gun, essentially. Probably the first thing that most people notice about ladybirds is that they're really bright. Most insects are dull brown or green, camouflaged. Ladybirds stand out. And the reason they can do that is because they produce what we call reflex blood, which is a defensive chemical. Working on ladybirds for a while, you get curious as to how good a defense this actually is, and so you decide to start licking ladybirds when no one else is looking. One of the reasons that we think the harlequin has done really, really well is because nothing will eat it. And I can certainly agree with the fact that it's a really, really foul-tasting ladybird. It's not a good idea to have harlequin for lunch. A famous entomologist once was asked, if you could say anything about the mind of the creator, what would you say? And he, he said, well, the creator, if there is one, has an inordinate fondness for beetles, because there are more beetles on Earth than any other type of 
organism in terms of species number? It's really the frontiers of ecology and biology. There's such a diversity of forms and of lifestyles and life histories. You look at a mammal, they're all doing pretty much the same thing. But insects, we have, I think it's about 40,000 invertebrates just in Britain. You can spend an entire lifetime studying one family and never even get close to the bottom of it.